Hi, I'm Jo Hill. Welcome to my garden studio in the heart of Staffordshire. We're going to make the English landscape cushion. This is a beginner's free motion kit. I've made this video to give you the confidence to have a go at this kit, to put aside any worries you may have and enjoy the experience. I know I learn visually by watching someone else. This video will show you exactly how I do it. It was commissioned by the Sewing Quarter, a shopping channel. They went into liquidation just before the airing. This cushion is stitched all in black thread, but on the video I'll be stitching in a few colours. You can add as much or as little detail as you wish. I encourage you to be adventurous and add details and colours that give you joy. It'll probably be a good idea to watch the video all the way through first, then start to make your cushion and start and stop the video when necessary. You've got in written instructions too. I really enjoyed designing this kit for you. I hope you enjoy making it and experience the joy and satisfaction of creating and bringing a little bit of our English landscape into your home. Your kit includes printed instructions, your zip, the back of the cushion and the panel that you're going to be embroidering onto. When you've unpacked your kit, place your, the front of your panel onto the backing fabric and trim off this side. You can now use this piece to have a go at your free, mo free motion embroidery and have a practice. Give your fabric a press. Take a vanishing pen and uh, using your design layout here, draw on where you want the lines to go. and then head over to your sewing machine. Using the lines that you drew on as a guide, stitch down with your normal foot on and the teeth engaged. done everything you need to do in straight stitch you can then trim all the ends off in one go this saves time
Now I'm going to change the foot from our normal straight foot to our free motion embroidery foot. You can do the straight lines in with this free motion foot if you wish to. I'm switching the machine over to lower the feet dog so those are not engaged anymore. I'm going to do some stitching uh, in the green still before I change to another colour. You'll notice I only did one of these lines down here which was the straightest one in the middle. You, you may need to tighten your hoop at this point to get it tight. Lift the needle up and then the foot up to slide your hoop underneath. I like to start with my needle in place. I've put my design ideas and suggestions behind me here so I can look at those to copy them. So I've now changed my colour and I'm going to do, use some orange to do these flowers in the front here.
Right, I've changed threads again to a blue to do these leaves in a different colour. Again, releasing the hoop. Switch down. trim off all your ends again and have another look and see how it's looking. I've decided I'm going to add... I've decided I'm going to add some more little flowers in this foreground here. Stitching a circle, lifting the foot up, and travelling to where you want to go. You can stop there if you want to. I'm just going to show you how you could add a few more little grasses if you wanted to. This time I'm going to show you well, without putting the hoop on and without putting your normal foot back on, just with the free motion foot. Put your hands either side. Do a little sit. Down. Now time to sew the ends of your zip. If you trim off the ends to make them even, 
and they want to be about one and a half centimeter off the sides there. Take some normal sewing thread, thread your needle. I'm going to do it double, but it doesn't really matter. The knot in the end. And then do the same to the other side. This is to stop the slider running off the end. You won't see any of this when you make when you finish the zip. If you have an overlocker, you can use this to neaten up the edge. Set your sewing machine to do a zigzag stitch, place your fabric near the edge, so you want the zigzag to just go over the edge of the fabric. This backing fabric is lovely to sew with and it's a lovely supportive fabric but it doesn't wash very well. So it, what you, if you want to put your own fabric on the back that washes better or that's a particular colour, feel free to do so. This fabric has got a slightly fuzzy back um, and then the front is smoother. So place them right sides together. Now you're going to stitch this end piece. It wants to be about one and a half centimetres in from the edge and about four centimetres to the side. You need to make sure that those that those lines are inside your your zip. Put your ordinary foot or your zipper foot on your machine now. Re-engage your feed dogs and we're going to sew this end bit that we've just drawn here. When you get to that end mark, um, do go back a little bit so you've secured it in place. And go down to the other end and do the same. My machine has a really long stitch on it, so I'm going to turn it up to six millimetres and stitch down this middle bit following that dotted line, taking out the pins as I go. didn't secure that end because that's tacking stitches and we're going to be removing those very quickly. Iron this seam open. Just zip and place it down in the middle with equal distance either side. 
and pin it in place, making sure the teeth are in the middle of the seam. We're now going to tack this in place, so with um, a contrasting colour. Start at one end and doing really big stitches, tack all the way along, removing the pins as you get to them. Put your zipper foot onto your sewing machine. I like to use these shoe feet. You can adjust where the foot is in relationship to the needle by this screw at the back here. You want to be about a half a centimetre away from the edge, starting at the very, very side. And you're gonna stitch, top stitch, all the way down. starts to pucker you can hold it top and bottom and pull it forward. So make sure your zip is opened up, cut right sides together and make sure that seam is opened right or flattened right back for pin in there and do the same to this side making sure that edge is neat.
Right, at this point you can take off your zipper foot and put on your, your normal foot back on. Do a couple of uh, forwards and backs at the start. Um, don't take too skimpy a seam, give allowance, give yourself a good half inch. When you get to a pin, pull it out. When you get to the end, pivot. Now you can zigzag or overlock your side edges. Just overlocked around the edges of this. I'm now going to cut the corners off so that when you pull it through it, the corners pull out nicely. There you go, your finished cushion. Uh, you can give that a good press and uh, pop a pad inside.